Hey there, Adam Bazaljet here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Let's talk today about the correct grip pressure in golf. It's a much talked about subject. It's an important subject too, and believe it or not, how you can actually practice it. And I'll share late in the video an anecdote with you from a golf school years ago that I've never forgotten, and a lesson learned in it might make, change the way you approach your golf, and it'll certainly help you practice your grip pressure. So first off, let me just say that I don't believe that all elite players grip it at the same tension level. I just don't believe that. Some players are a lot more languid and loose, their arms are a little softer, their wrists are a bit whippier, others are a bit firmer. So what is the right pressure? Well, you have to ask yourself, when the job is at hand of swinging this club, what is necessary? And it comes down to two things. Can you control the club? Hey, that club's going to start moving at pretty high speed. It's probably going to hit a divot in a golf ball. It takes a little bit of grip pressure, but can you also have mobility in the the wrists? Can you have freedom to create speed and actually feel the club head? So have a very close look at the way you hold it for just a moment, then we'll work through how you can dial this in for yourself. Okay, quick word, both hands are important, but let's talk lead hand, glove hand if you like. If you'll relax your hand and grip it more across the base of the fingers, so this heel pad is on top of the club, remember the old Ben Hogan drawing in his book? You will have leverage. Your fingers are a lot stronger than your palm. This pad gives you leverage. It really helps. Just try if you're at home. Grip it way in the palm. A lot of people do this without realizing it. Exaggerate. You see how much harder it is to cock your wrist, and you'll see how much heavier the club feels. So when you start start swinging at high speed, your brain is going to tighten up because it's not going to have much leverage. Club's going to feel too heavy. Get the grip right. Now let's start with a little premise here. Your brain, your subconscious brain, when it works with motor skills, is really a genius at doing everyday things. So picture a table this high, there's a hairbrush on one side and there's a 20 pound dumbbell on the other. Without any effort, do you think you'll grip them at exactly the same pressure, tension level through the wrist and arm? Certainly not. So in other words, there's a certain sense of what's appropriate. Now, I'm going to recommend to you that you get away from the golf course and get a club in your hand regularly. Let's say you're seated in the couch. Practice the grip we talked about, but practice moving the club around to the point where you start to really dial in, hey, I have a job to do here, I have to swing this with speed and energy, but I have to control it. Can you play with the variable of grip pressure? So you've got enough pressure in your grip to clearly control the club. It's not coming out of your hands, but it's not translating into excessive tension through the wrists and forearms. You should be able to feel the club moving around you. Tighten it up a little bit, do it a bit too much, loosen it up a bit, practice that a little bit, it will make all the difference difference. Now let's share that story with you next about the golf school. I think it'll help, help you really dial in what might be a pitfall for you. Share this video with your friends, I hope, if you find it helpful. So many, many years ago, I was doing a golf school with the inimitable Fred Shoemaker, Will Ellender, my close friend, and I were assisting him, and he said to us, hey, watch this. We were on the putting green. He said, check this out. So we brought the whole group over. There was 10 people or so, and he's single one guy out and said, okay, let's have you hit a seven, eight foot putt in front of the group and everyone's having fun. And he says, what are your keys when you putt? And the guy said, well, I just try to keep my head still and just watch the ball and make a good stroke. He said, okay. So the, the guy, let's say, was putting this way. So Fred puts the ball down like that and says, go ahead and putt that ball. The guy putts it. Fred says to him, what was the number on top of the ball? I put it right on top. The guy didn't know. He said, I have no idea. So what Fred said to him, this was the interesting, he said, you're playing indoor golf. You're thinking about watching the ball. You're not actually experiencing what's going on out there. You're not actually watching the ball. And you can apply that to a lot of things, especially in your golf swing. So if you're trying to figure out something in your swing, grip pressure, instead of thinking so much about the grip pressure you want, why don't you think of nothing and see if you can actually notice the grip pressure you have. See if you can experience things, whatever it is you're working on in your golf, you'll have more fun and you'll do a lot better. So next time you're out hitting some balls, pay attention to what you're feeling. Don't try to do it right. Just see what you're feeling. See what you notice with your grip pressure in your arms. Get out of your own head and see what's happening and allow some of that fantastic ability the subconscious mind has to just start to dial it up. One final word here, and that is not every job is just the same in golf. Most full swings are roughly the same, but let's say this was really thick, tall, rough, and the ball was buried in it. Maybe a buried lie in a bunker, and I've got to really slam down in there and get the club onto the ball. I'm going to need a little more firmness in my forearms and effectively grip pressure if you like. How about if I have a little eight, nine yard, nice cushy lie, just a little soft brush pitch. I don't need as much tension. So don't overthink it, dial it in and get a good grip there and you'll sort it out. Hope this helps you. 